Father, we thank you so much for this morning, this time together. We're really grateful for the time that we have in the flesh to worship you, to praise you, to thank you, to give you glory, to honor you as our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Heavenly Father, and Holy Spirit, God on the earth today, dwelling within us, Christ in us, the hope of glory, the great mystery revealed. Father, thank you so much. We give you all the praise. Thank you for the anointing on the word of God this morning, that our hearts are open, supple to receive your revealed truth for us individually. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We're going to talk today about Thanksgiving. And this is really one of my favorite topics to talk about. Um, it says in, in Timothy, which I was going to get that scripture, that in the last days, unthankfulness would be one of the indicators. People just not thankful. And we are seeing that so much. Um, the spirit of entitlement where people just expect to be blessed. And when they are, there's not a thought to be thankful for it. And that's certainly abounding in our culture today. But God has a lot to say about Thanksgiving. And he is a thankful God. We're going to go through a, a lot of scriptures. I hope you have a pen and paper in hand. So if you're wanting to go back on some of these verses, um, you'll have them. The first one is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In everything. It doesn't say for everything, does it? It says in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God. So now we have a will of God, something that's super important to him, and that is thankfulness. Something to really make a note of is, is gratitude is an attitude. It's a personal quality. I like to call it a character quality. And it molds us and shapes our lives. It's not just something we say or do. It's an attitude. Do you ever get up in the morning and hop in the shower and thank the Father for a hot shower? <laughs> do you ever make a cup of coffee in the morning and thank him for that cup of coffee? See, it's a real indicator of, of your level of thankfulness that you just don't take for granted the little things that are operating in your life, but, but you're thankful for those things. You recognize that there are many people who don't have a hot shower in the morning, many people who can't make a fresh cup of coffee in the morning. That's recognizing the goodness of the Lord in your life. and. It compounds that in your life to where you, you, you live your whole day thankful over the little things. The little things are the things that compound into big things in your life. And don't ever dismiss those little thank yous that you shoot vertical to the Lord for the insignificant things that most people would consider, but not to you. Amen. In the Old Testament, sacrifices of thanksgiving were offered. And let me give you a few scriptures on that. Second Chronicles uh, chapter 29, verse 31. Second Chronicles uh, chapter 33, verse 16. Uh, Levit um, Leviticus 7, uh, verse 12, verse 13, verse 15. Uh, Leviticus 22, 29. We're going to look at Psalms 50. In verse 23, and it says, Whosoever offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that order his conversation aright, I will show the salvation of the Lord. Look at 56, um, 56 12. And it says, Thy vows are upon me, O God, I will render praise unto you. And then Psalms 116. Of course, Psalms is just loaded. That's why one of the reasons David was a man after God's own heart is he was a praiser. 
he was a thankful man. Psalms 116 verse 17 says, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. In the Old Testament, some were even appointed to the office of giving thanks and indicating, indicating to God, to us, the importance of thanksgiving to the Father. So again, uh, 1 Chronicles 16, 4, the Levites were appointed to give thanks to the Lord. Um, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 21, we know the story where Joshua literally put the praisers, the thanksgivers, the worshipers ahead of the warriors. That's such an incredible story showing us the power of thanksgiving and praise. So I'm not going to get into that story for right now. We all know it. 2 Chronicles 31, 2, another where people were literally appointed. In the New Testament, which we are in right now, the dispensation of grace, the fruit of our lips is a type of offering, a sacrifice to God. Now let's look to Hebrews chapter 13, and I'll give you a scripture for that. Hebrews 13 uh, verse five, and it says, let your conversation I'm sorry, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Continually. You know what that means? A state of being. Let your state of being be a continual offering, a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. So that's how we give thanks in the New Testament is by the fruit of our lips. God desires genuine gratefulness from the heart. He's not an egomat egomatic. I mean, he does not need your gratefulness, your praise and your worship. He doesn't. He's got a heaven full of it right now. But he knows that we need to offer it. It's coming from us and showing him it's important to me to give praise and thanksgiving. So Psalms 54, 6 says, willingly, I will, I will sacrifice to thee. I will give thanks to thy name, O Lord, for it is good. Or you could say, it's good for me to give you praise and thanksgiving. Psalms 86, 12. Psalms 9, 1, and Psalms 138, 1. I will give thanks with my whole heart. Hallelujah. Luke 18, 11. The Pharisees stood and were praying thus to themselves. God, I thank thee that I am not like the other people. <laughs> that was a Pharisee. So I want you to note the motive and the attitude in his heart, right? <clears throat> he was self-righteous. He was pounding his own chest. You know, I, it's all about me. I don't want to be like the other people. God commands us to be thankful. Wow. Do you know that all the commands in the Bible, the commandments are not suggestions? Do you know that? He really does command us because he knows what's good for us. Psalms 50, verse 14, offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows to thy most high. There's so many commands of praise and worship in the Bible. Uh, Ephesians 5, verse 3, um, Psalms 97, 12, Colossians. 112. First Thessalonians 518. We're probably going to go through some of these too as we go on. Let's go to First Thessalonians 518. It's a really good one. They're all good. First Thessalonians 518, it says, 
in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's the first one we started off with. I, I wanted to expound on that. You don't give thanks for certain things. You know, we're not giving thanks for this coronavirus happening right now that shut down the world, are we? But in it, can't we find things to be thankful for? I know I have. And I'm sure everybody, if you, are, if you have the eyes of the Lord, the anointed eyes of the Lord, you are finding in this situation many, many things to be thankful for. So God commands us to be thankful, to have his mindset, to have his eyes and his perspective to be thankful in all things. Every gospel in the Bible just depicts Jesus, who is our example, by the way, giving thanks to God, his Father. Um, Matthew 15, 36, and taking the seven loaves, what did he do? He gave thanks. He thanked his Father for the multiplication and the increase. In Mark 14, 23, when he had taken the cup and given thanks. See, this was a whole attitude of Jesus through the gospels and the gospels are our snapshot picture of Jesus. Uh, Luke 22, verse 17 and 19. Uh, let's turn to John. 611. I have so many scriptures, we just can't go to all of them and get through this teaching today. 611. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them uh, were sat down, and likewise of the fish as much as they would. You know, we teach our children to bless our food before we eat it and to give thanks for it. And that is very an important step that we do ourselves and teach our children as well. <clears throat> but all through the disciples, all through the gospels, you're going to see Jesus giving thanks to the Father. Another example in the Bible is Daniel. Daniel was obedient to be thankful, even when it was forbidden by the authorities. I love this one. I'm a righteous rebel. <laughs> Daniel 6.10. Now when Daniel knew that the document was signed, he entered his house, now in his roof chamber. He had a window open toward Jerusalem. And he continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before his God as he had done previously. Let's just give pause to that. See, Daniel had an attitude of prayer, worship, praise, thanksgiving. And just because the authorities told him he couldn't do it, didn't mean it stopped Daniel. We have a higher authority. His name is God. And we are to give an account unto him one day, uh, really every day. And Daniel knew that very well. So there was no king or kingly authority that was going to stop him from worshiping the Lord. It's good for us, by the way, to give thanks. Say, it's good for me. It's good for me to give thanks. Psalms 92.1. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. How does it make you feel when you thank somebody for doing something nice for you? Do you feel sad or depressed or discouraged? No, it, you want to know why? It's an attitude of God. You know, God is such a thankful God that he's got a book of remembrance in, in heaven. Did you know that? When you get there and you are spend time with the Father, he's going to open up a book called the Book of Remembrance, and he's going to open it to your name, and he's going to thank you for all the things that you did on the earth, in the flesh, that furthered his kingdom. 
Isn't that amazing? He's a thankful God, and he knows that it's good for you to be thankful. And that's going to be a quality, a God quality in each one of us. It's a mighty tool, a tool to ushering in the presence of the Lord. In uh, Psalms 95, 2, it says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Psalms 104, enter his gates with thanksgiving. You can't even get past the gates if you don't have a thankful heart. Think about that. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Two thankfulnesses in one scripture. Amen. Now, you know what this is? It's the protocol of worship. A protocol of worship? You mean there's a protocol of worship? Yes, there is. If you were got an invitation to see President Trump, do you know that there would be a protocol to that? Do you understand that? They would have you sit down in a place, uh, probably sever several different places, until you were ushered in by someone or several people into the presence of the president. And there would be a protocol for that. Why do we flippantly go to the father without realizing there's a real protocol? Making sure my heart is right, that there's no offenses, there's no unforgiveness, there's no self-pity, you know, all of that, that we get ourselves right and in a right place before the Lord, enter his gates <laughs> with thanksgiving. So it's protocol. Psalms 141 says, surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. Well, the unrighteous aren't thanking the Lord, are they? They're not acknowledging him as God. But the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name, and the upright shall dwell in thy presence. Well, it causes us to abound in the faith. In Colossians 2, 7, it says, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. It also yields the peace of God in our hearts and in our minds. What, the, what we need even as believers today right now is what? Peace. Don't we need peace in our lives, especially with what's going on right now? Turn to Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to get pick, pick up on a scripture that's super important right now. Well, it always is. Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to look at, start at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always and give, and, and again I say, in case you didn't get it the first time, rejoice. Rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men that the Lord is at hand. Be careful, be anxious, be troubled, be afraid of nothing. But in everything, there's that word in again, by prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. Let your requests be known and be made known unto God. And that peace, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. Well, it's super important that we understand the importance of thanksgiving. What else does thanksgiving do? It honors and magnifies God. It makes the problem small and God big. Turn to, turn to Psalm 6930. A lot of people just want to look at their problems and make their problems big. But God wants you and I to make him big in our problems. And one way of doing that is giving God the praise, the glory, and the thanksgiving. 
Psalm 6930, and it says, I will praise the name of God with, with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Amen. Magnify the Lord in your problem. Make him look so much bigger. You know, we have the story of the Israelites that magnified the giants instead of magnifying the Lord. And in doing so, they missed out on the promises that God had right in front of them. God had already told them, I am giving you the land. Now go and take it. Go and uh, multiply and take the land. Yes, there was giants. There, yes, there was opposition. But God already told them what to do, that he would be with them, working with them to take the land, but instead they chose to look at the problem and make that the bigger thing than their God. Please let us look at that situation with the Israelites and, and understand that God has given you everything, all things pertaining to life and godliness. Go take it. Don't let distractions or opposition of any kind prevent you from entering in to the promises of God that are already laid up for you. Amen. It is good. It's a good spiritual indicator of your spiritual condition. Thanksgiving. Now that's, let me take pause on that one. The wicked in Romans 1 21 the wicked are ungrateful. Let's all go there because I know we've, we've talked about this already in the past, but it's worth looking at right now. It so epics what we're going through, even present tense. And in um, verses one, well, the whole chapter, but in 21, it's the steps that lead you away from God, uh, even as Christians. It can lead you away and you can forfeit your salvation. Why? Because you have free will. You have free will. If you don't want to choose to serve God today, you don't have to. God doesn't have robots and puppets. But there's steps that lead you away from the Lord. And look at verse 21 of Romans 1. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. So it's the wicked that are ungrateful. Number two, being unthankful. Do you think thankfulness is a big deal to God? It really is. And we need to get this. But became vain in their imaginations. They didn't have the mind of Christ. They had their own agenda, their own lust, their own desires. And their foolish heart became darkened. Do you see the steps? They didn't glorify the Lord and weren't thankful. They didn't honor God as God. They didn't give thanks. They became fruitful in their speculations or their perspective. And their foolish heart was darkened. So they professed themselves to be wise. They became fools. And they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, to birds, to four-footed beasts, to creeping things. Oh, what are these? They're idols. People can be idols. Do you know that? You can make people idols. Unrighteous, unrighteous people can become idols. Praise the Lord. So let's continue. Um, Thankfulness is an indicator of your spiritual character, where it's at right now. If people can do things for you and you don't say thank you, there's, there's a lack there. There's just a lack. There's a, how do I want to put that? There's a, a not knowing the importance of thankfulness. It hasn't been cultivated in your life. and. Since it's such a big deal to God, 
it should be a big deal to us to cultivate that and never take for granted the people in your life, in your sphere of influence. Just because they're your wife or your husband or your kids or your friends or your mom or your dad doesn't give us the license to take them for granted. We should always be thankful when anybody does anything for us. And the, the reason why I'm saying that so strongly is it's, it, it has an effect on your God character. And I don't know about you, I've been a preacher of building character, the godly character in your life, as long as I've been teaching. That has been, everybody's kind of got their niche. That's been my niche. Um, because don't ultimately we want to be like God, you know, reflecting the image and likeness of Jesus, who's our example. Isn't that our, our goal in life? Isn't that our desire? Well, this is a big piece of the puzzle, being thankful. So um, I, I think I'm gonna do two parts because it's such a big thing. And I, I wanna go, I'm gonna move on. I'm not gonna do the next chapter that I have written down here, uh, which is how should we give thanks? I can say that um, the first one is audibly, but there's lots of ways of giving thanks. We can do it secretly, right? Um, but audibly letting people know that we're thankful is a big key on compounding that in our God character. What I wanna go to is when should we give thanks, when? All right, so in everything, <laughs> in every circumstance, we should give thanks. Let's, I'm going to dig in this a little bit. Um, I'm going to dig in this because I, I think it's super important. Ephesians 5.20, let's get some scriptures in this. Because right now we're in a circumstances that a lot of people are not wanting to give thanks in. And rightly so. I mean, I'm not condoning it for sure. But we live in this world. We're not of this world. And we've got to always remember that. We're just passing through. But as we're passing through, we have to live the God quality, the God character, reflecting Jesus. So 520 is giving thanks all, always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How do we do that? Verse 19, speaking, in, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. So this is one of them. Turn to, well, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. It says, giving thanks always for all things unto God. We already came back. We just flipped to Philippians uh, 4 in, every, in all things giving thanks. Um, Philippians 4.11, though, it says, For I have learned in whatsoever state I am in therewith to be content. We're going to talk a little bit about that, the importance of contentment. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. You ever want to know what the will of God is? This is certainly a will of God. Second Thessalonians chapter one. I'm going to go there. Second Thessalonians chapter one. Okay, where are you? In verses three. We are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Look at verse uh, chapter 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God 
have from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and the belief of the truth. So here we are in all things, in every circumstances, giving thanks. How about while entering into his presence? Now we already gave Psalms 104, the importance of entering in what? With thanksgiving. Another is when do we give thanks? Continually, habitually. Oh, I've got lots of scriptures on that. Ephesians 1, verse 16. And Ephesians 5, verse 20. Always giving thanks. Philemon, chapter 1, verse 4. Is always giving thanks. First Thessalonians 1, verse 2, which we read. Always giving thanks. Second Timothy. I'm going to go there. Verses one, ver, verses or chapter one, verse three. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with a pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembered, I have remembrance of the these in my prayers day and night. Again, continually. Uh, Hebrews, we just saw, talked about continually. Psalms 34, 1. At all times, continually, all the day long. Are you getting the point? <laughs> and I could go on and on with lots more scriptures. Another one is even in the middle of the night. Psalms 119, 62. You know, I woke up at four o'clock this morning, wide awake. Open my eyes. Lord, somebody you want me to pray for? What do you want me to do? I ended up getting up and reading a chapter of a book I I've been reading. Um, I just sensed that the Lord wanted me to spend a little time with him. So in the middle of the night, just thank him. Get up. At midnight, I shall rise to give you thanks. Daniel 6.10. We just read that. Three times a day. He got up and on his knees and, and was praising and giving thanks to the Lord. In First Chronicles chapter 23, verse 30, and they are to stand every morning to thank and to praise the Lord and likewise in the evening. It's going on all the time. <laughs> giving thanks. So what should we give thanks for? We have a lot to thank God for, don't we? In Psalms 18, 47 through 49, we're to give God thanks for the victory. It is God that avenges me. He delivered me from my enemies. Therefore, I will give thanks. In 1 Corinthians 15, 57, it says, But thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory. You know you stand in a place of victory. The devil is under your feet. One of the reasons why Jesus came is, is to destroy all the works of the devil for you. Amen. He always gives us the victory. And he did it 2,000 years ago. We're living in it. And guess what? That has not lessened. As things get a little bit more precarious as time goes on, for for Christians, persecution. We've always been in, in a bit of tribulation. And I've said it this way. My spirit man inside is always itching to get out and manifest in my glorified body. The, it's, it's a bit of a suffering to be in this flesh. I don't have the freedom that I know Jesus gave me. Do you ever get that? you ever just feel like you're, you know, punch, you're a punching bag from the inside, wanting to get out, that spirit man, <clears throat> that's a bit of suffering to know that you're in, locked into this flesh that lusts the things of the world, that is contained, it's limited. One day we won't have it, but right now we do. 
and it's a limiting factor for us. It's a suffering. It's a part of suffering for me as I think about it. And it's a bit of tribulation or tribulation. Um, I know that's kind of a different perspective, but I have thought a lot about that. But we are get entering into more refined persecution. We Christians have always been persecuted from the world. People don't understand you. You're radical. You're going to church now. You know, all these kind of little persecutions, they are going to intensify you're, because you're, you're the light in a very dark world. And your light is getting brighter as you're increasing in faith, increasing in favor, increasing in prosperity, because the hand of God is on you. You're standing out in your freedom. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because people who don't have that freedom in Christ, they're jealous of you. They're envious of you. You know, that Sunday night that you and Josh were here with your kids and we had quite a group <laughs> in what we call lockdown. One of our neighbors came out on the front porch and was just mad. Why were they mad? Because we were exercising our freedom and they thought they couldn't. Are you getting that? That's going to happen more and more as time goes on, because we're not going to lessen our freedom. We're not going to buckle under fear and oppression of the enemy. Not going to happen. So it's a part of persecution and tribulation. But we have victory over all of that, because whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. We have, we have, we can thank God over uh, the victory of sin. Romans 7, 23. Let's go there. Jesus took upon his body all the sins of mankind. And our sins have been nailed to the cross. We've been crucified with him. We live a life now hid in Christ. See, the, the, the problem is with the world is they just don't know this truth. And that's why they're jealous and envious. They could have it too. We don't corner the market on Jesus. Jesus has been given to everybody. Some people don't know, but some people who do know just don't want him. Seven uh, of Romans and the verse 23 to 25 says, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringeth me, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of death? Oh, thank God. <laughs> Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with, the, with my mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So we have victory over sin. Jesus paid that price. What's another we, thing we can thank the Lord for? We can thank him for over death and the grave. First Corinthians, let's go there. Chapter 15. You know, Jesus holds uh, the keys to death and to hell. That's why he said, I lay my, my life down. No one takes it from me. No one took Jesus' death. He laid it down willingly. So, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's given us the victory over death and the grave. We're not going to be there forever, are we? We're going to get our glorified body and rule and reign with the Lord forever and ever and ever. What else do we have victory over and be thankful over? For his goodness, his mercy, which is what? 
forgiveness. Are you forgiven today? Glory to God. First Chronicles 16, 34 to 35. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. First Chronicles 16, 41 says, give thanks to the Lord because his loving kindness is everlasting. Glory to God. Ezra chapter three, verse 11 says, and they sang praising and giving thanks to the Lord saying, for he is good. Psalms 54, 6, I will give thanks to his name, O Lord, for it is good. <coughs> Again, over and over. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. His goodness and his mercy, his forgiveness. Isaiah 12, 11 says, I will give thanks to thee, O Lord, for altogether thou was angry with me. Thy anger is turned away and thou hast comforted me. How many of you know that God is not mad at you? His anger has been turned away. The father was satisfied with the shedding of the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. God's not mad at us anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. Another thing that we can thank God for is his protection. Wow. I can say that over and over and over again. My daughter, Laura, called me yesterday. She slipped and her head fell on her marble counter. And she said, Mom, will you pray for me and, and be in agreement with me? And I did. I prayed Psalm 91 over her. I said, we have the promises of God to pray over our life for protection. And we just agreed in the Lord that she'd be fine. And she was a little bit disorientated for a few minutes, but she is fine. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 49 says, And that bringeth me forth from my enemies, thou also hast lifted me up on high above them that rose up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. How many of you know there's wicked men out there, wicked people? But God has delivered us from them all. We are not to fear wickedness. We're not to fear anything like that. Um, read Psalms 91. That should be something that you, that you read on an everyday course is Psalms 91. Because not only is the world full of wickedness, the earth is groaning. The earth is groaning. Our weather patterns are so whacked out. I think there's going to be a lot more weather storms coming our way, earthquakes, um, hurricanes, tornadoes, because why? The earth is groaning under the pressure of the sin. So we're, we need the protection even from the earth and the storms that it's going to be producing. Get used to thanking God for his protection. Get used to speaking and declaring forth um, the word of God in, in protection mode over you and your family. Get used to it. Do it every day. Compound it in your life. What else can we thank God for? His faithfulness. For he is holy and he is faithful. Uh, Isaiah 25, 11, again, let's see. Did we read that one already? I will exalt thee. Nope, Isaiah 25, 11. I'm sorry, I, I, Isaiah 25, 1. I will exalt thee. I will give thanks to thy name for thou hast worked wonders, plans formed long ago with perfect faithfulness. God is a faithful God. He's not just good. He's not just merciful. He is a faithful God. Amen. In Psalms 30, verse 4, it says, I will give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. What else do we give him thanks for? How about for the wonders of creation and life? Psalms 139, 14 says, I will give thanks to thee, for I am fearfully 
and wonderfully made. Wonderful are thy works. Wonderful are thy works. We thank him for his truth, his righteous ordinances, and his judgments. Let's turn to my favorite psalm of all times. Okay. Yes. <laughs> my very favorite is Psalms 103. Because to me, it just says so much. It encompasses so much. And it, and it says it for right now, present tense. And it puts you into a place where you may not be thankful or may not want to even praise God. But it's, it, it reminds me what David did in a very bad situation. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Now I'm speaking to myself. Soul, we're going to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Think about what he's done for me. Now I'm making this present tense. I'm making this very personal. He has forgiven me of all my iniquities. All of them. That brings in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Uh, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He has healed me of all my diseases. That brings in 2 Peter 2.24. By his stripes, I am, I is healed. Right now, present tense. Who has redeemed my life from destruction and crowned me with loving kindness and tender mercy. So that brought in Psalms 91 again, and then Lamentations 3, verses 21 through 25. Who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. And that's Isaiah 40, verses 31. I shall walk and not be weary. I shall run and shall not faint. So this is our anti-aging verse in the Bible. He renews our youth like the eagles. Eagles soar in a storm. Did you know that? They, kept, they, kept, they catch the drafts and they ride it out. They're not they're not thrown down to the earth in storms. They catch the wind. They catch the drafts. They catch the drafts of the storm. So he renews us. He restores us. He gives us the victory in the storm. I love that. Glory to God. What else? Let me see. What else do we have here? What else can we thank him for? How about food and drink and provision? Oh, the list is endless. It's endless. He's given us the victory in all of this. Um, 1 Timothy 4, verse 3, it says, for, for some advocate abstaining from foods which God has created to be gratefully shared. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected. If it is received with what? Gratitude. You know, a lot of people have, they've resurrected the law. You can't eat bacon. That's, this is what I have to say about that. <laughs> I eat bacon and thank God for it. I thank God for it. It's sanctified for us. Uh, second uh, Corinthians 9, 11, and 12. You will be enriched in everything for all liber liberally, which through us is producing thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only fully supplying the needs of the saint, saints, but is also overflowing through many thanksgiving to God. So many scriptures on this. Um, Romans 14, 6 is really good. He who eats does so for the Lord. 
for he gives thank he gives thanks to God. Do you give God thanks before you eat or drink? You should. It sanctifies it as well. You know, if there's anything poisonous in it, um, you've got a promise of God for that. How about thanking God for healing? Luke 17, verses 12 through 18. And he fell at his feet, on his face, at his feet, giving thanks to him. There's so many um, examples in the Gospels. Look at uh, the big one is about what we just read, the um, uh, man with the leprosy, uh, the 10 lepers. And God sent him away to the priest to be uh, under the law cleansed. But one turned back when he saw that, he, that the leprosy was gone. It was gone. And when he came back, Jesus said, Thy faith has made thee whole. Did it take faith for that one leper to come back to the Lord Jesus Christ and thank him? It must be. And in doing so, we we hear a lot of preachers, and I believe it too. The the leprosy, any of the leprosy that actually ate away the flesh was made whole on this one leper. Is Thanksgiving a big deal to God? Yeah. Is it important to cultivate it in your life, in the little things? Yeah. It is. Um, what time is it? 56, 8.56. Okay. It's funny, I could feel that in my spirit. We were getting close. So I'm going to um, skip over to the very last thing, but I'm going to say this. Um, there's so much to this. And if, it, if it's the Lord's will that I, I, I continue on this next week, I will. But the secret of maintaining a grateful heart is contentment. And you need to write that down because being content in whatever state you're at is what Paul was. And he is a great example for all of us. Um, thanking him daily on a daily basis. Again, I can't reiterate, I can't say it enough how important it is for you to do that. Psalm 68, 19 says, blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with, with benefits. Has God um, sat on the throne and said, well, today, I don't think I'm going to bless Alicia. I think I'll just give it all to this person today. Does he do that? No. Should our, our day be void of thanking God? No. Thank him no matter what happens. We already talked about Philippians 4.11. Um, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am in, therein to be content. First Timothy uh, chapter six, verse six through eight says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. And having food and raiment, let us therefore be content. Hebrews 13, five, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Do you know that, um, turn to 30, Psalms 30, 12. We're gonna end with this, Psalms 30, 12. Godly contentment is like a garment that you wear. You wear it. It's just a godly contentment. Psalms 30, 12, it says, to the end that my glory, let's go to 11. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and gird me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent, O Lord, my God. I will give thanks to you forever.
you know, forever and ever and ever, we're going to be thanking the Lord. But the time we do it in the flesh is so short. It's such a short, short period of time that we do it in the flesh. All the more reason we will be rewarded on obeying the word of God and being thankful is a command. It's not a suggestion. So cultivate a thankful heart and you will not only be rewarded here and now in the earth, but you'll be rewarded by the Lord when you stand before him one day because you made that important in your life. Amen. Father, I thank you for today's teaching. Thank you, Father, that you shared your heart with us this morning. And you are a thankful God and you want your kids to be thankful. So Lord, thank you for impressing upon us this day the importance of being thankful for the little things and cultivating that not only in our heart, but teaching that to our children and those in our sphere of influence. Thank you, Father God. We bless you and honor you this day. You are an awesome, good, and faithful Father. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I love you all very much. Thank you for your attention. And thank you for coming in on Thursday morning, 8 o'clock.